praying in the middle of the desert. These men are fighters of the Ali al-Akbar Brigade from Kabbalah, one of Shia Islam's most holy cities. A watchman keeps an eye on the horizon. In this desert war, as in the streets of Mosul, the car bomb is the jihadist's main weapon. The hastily built defensive mud berms stretch as far as the eye can see. In the distance, a convoy of the popular mobilization units is entering a village held by the Islamic State group. The brigade's commander directs operations from a nearby mound. Their progress is more difficult than expected, so he asks for air support from the Iraqi army. Two Iraqi army helicopters arrive to support them. A car bomb is detected and destroyed. The operation takes place some 30 kilometers south of Talafar, a jihadist stronghold populated by Turkmen, some of whom are Sunnis, others Shias. From the former, the Islamic State group have drawn many leaders, while some of the latter, like this man, have joined the forces of the popular mobilization units. Children and women have suffered enormously. Some of my relatives are still over there. Some have been harmed and even killed. Those who have cooperated with the Islamic State group will be punished on a case-by-case -case basis. In the past, the Shia militias have committed crimes against the Sunni population of the cities they've freed. The role they will play in the reconquest of Talafar remains uncertain. This Turkmen leader wants them to take part in the battle. The Iraqi army will enter Talafar, specifically the 15th Division, and with them will be Turkmen units of the popular mobilization units. These fighters will accompany the 15th Division when they enter Talafar. Last week, the Iraqi parliament passed a law legalizing these Shia militias, as a result of which, they hope to get better weapons, salaries, and pensions for the families of their killed combatants. But for the moment, these brigades of volunteers are far from resembling a regular army. You know, age is not a problem for us. Some of my brothers in arms are over 70 years old, but they're still active and energetic. They're fighting for their ideology and faith, and more than anything else, to kick these rats of the Islamic State group out of Iraq. The Shia paramilitary have won many battles against the jihadists and now use drones mainly to spot car bombs driven by suicide attackers. Before, when we didn't have these drones, we used to lose dozens of martyrs in every battle. But today, at this stage of the campaign, with our Ali al-Akbar brigade, we only lose maybe three martyrs. They're also waging a war on the media front. Here, one of their communications officers records a piece to camera against the background of the battlefield. And their role may not be limited to Iraq. Their leader, Abu Mahdi al-Muhandis, is ready to cross the borders. If the source of terrorism is still in Syria, or anywhere in the near region, and if it's affecting Iraq, we have the right, if the Iraqi government decides so, to confront these terrorists. Instead of fighting on our soil, we will bring the fight to the territories they still call their own. With these regional aspirations and newly recognized by parliament, the popular mobilization unit's influence is undoubtedly on the rise something that is widely perceived as a threat by Iraq's Sunni population.